Hey, have you been running into the problem of getting frequent system overload errors and having your project freeze up because your CPU can't keep up with your project? Well, keep watching because in this video, I'll show you how you can avoid that issue and optimize your DOS so that you are running at the best possible settings. Hi, I'm Reagan Ram with OrpheusAudioAcademy.com, helping you make better music and grow your fan base online. And here we're looking at how to optimize your DAW, specifically Logic. So first off, make sure there's no other programs running when you have Logic running. So close you know, your browser windows or any other apps you have running, and this will help free up your computer CPU so it can focus just on Logic. Now from there, another thing you might wanna do is just set up uh, CPU monitoring just so you can keep an eye on what's going on. So to do that, you can simply right click up here in your control bar and say customize control bar and display. And so from, from here you can check software monitoring. So then you can monitor how your software is handling, how your CPU is handling everything. So we'll click save as default and then apply defaults and then I click okay. And now you can see it's still not showing up here. So we actually gotta click this drop down here and then choose custom. And so now you can see your CPU and hard drive monitoring here. Now, another thing you can do to help your DAW to help Logic run better is to actually save your projects to an external device. So that's what I'm doing here. I have this external device called Orpheus and I have a folder on there called Logic. I'm saving all my Logic projects here on an external device so that all my computer is running is the software and all the, the plugins and everything, but it doesn't have to handle actually saving the project that's on an external device. Now from here, you where you're gonna find most of your settings to improve your functionality is up here and go to Logic Pro and then Preferences and Audio. Now from here, you're gonna look at changing your buffer size. So you're gonna want a smaller buffer size if you're recording, but if you're mixing and trying to handle all those tracks, you're gonna want your buffer size to be as large as possible. And by the way, if you wanna learn more about buffer size, then you can click the card above to check out my video that's all about buffer size and what is the best buffer size that you should use for recording and mixing. Next, you have process buffer range. And if yours is set on maybe medium or small, consider jumping that Consider moving that to large. This will also help you handle and process everything that's going on in your track. Another thing you're gonna consider is multi-threading. So you might wanna consider moving it to playback in live tracks. If you just have it set on playback, then it's going to try to handle any input with just one core of your computer. Whereas if you do playback in live tracks, it'll spread out the processing of input across multiple cores on your computer. The only downside of that is it, it has an overall higher CPU load, but your computer might be able to handle it because it's, it's spread out. So this is something to experiment with. Maybe try both of these to see what does better for you. Now, another thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that all your effects are being used with send. So don't go down to audio effects, go to say reverb and throw a reverb on a track because you're gonna get lots of instances of the same reverb plugin running across multiple different tracks. Instead, what you should do is instead go to sends and say we'll use bus 10. So this is like an alternate track that we are using for effects. So we'll put space designer on here and we'll make that all the way wet. And now we can control the reverb here and we can send this single instance of reverb to many different tracks, right? I can have this going to it. We can even name this. So we'll say this is verb. And if I have another track, right? They both, if we go look in here, we can see they're both going to bus 10, which is reverb. So they could both have the same reverb, but we can control different amounts. And so you should consider doing this with a lot of your effects is using sends instead of inserts. And if this is confusing, I did a whole video breaking down the difference between buses and sends and aux tracks and I'll have a card above. You can check that out and that explains all the differences between these types of tracks and the benefits they can give you when mixing. Now, a final thing you might wanna to try to do is freezing your tracks. So this basically temporarily bounces a track so it's not using as much 
CPU power. So as you can see, there's no freeze option here. So we're gonna wanna right click here and then we wanna go to configure track header and now we can click freeze. So now we have the option to freeze a track. And so if we click freeze, now that track is temporarily not being used. And so it's not taking up CPU power. And if all else fails, you can try creating a song in parts. So one thing I will do is I will create the instrumental mix of a track. And then because I use a lot of vocal tracks, typically I'll then bounce that track to stereo and then I'll add all the vocals over that track, over that stereo track. I'll add all the vocals then in a separate project. And then I bounce that down and I open that in a, another separate project for mastering. So I've kind of got the song creation, vocals, and then mastering, and that saves on CPU power versus trying to have one project that has all your instruments and all your vocals. Yes, you have more projects, but if you're having CPU issues, that can help a lot. Now, speaking of mixing and mastering, if you're wanting to finish more tracks faster, I have a free song finishing checklist that you can grab in the description below that walks you through a proven step-by-step -step process for finishing your mix and master so you can release more music. All right, if you found this video helpful, feel free to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know in the comments below, what other issues are you having in Logic and let me know so I can do future tutorials on those topics. All right, with that, have an awesome day and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.